In this video, I'm gonna control an output pin according to the pressure that I have on the pressure sensor. In part one, I introduced the problem of needing to create a, a constant vacuum, and the pressure sensor is going to maintain or help maintain the vacuum inside of a tank. The tank vacuum will be between 15 inches of mercury and 25 inches of mercury. When the tank reaches 15 inches of mercury, the motor will turn on until the tank reaches 25 inches of mercury and then the motor will turn off. It'll stop pumping the air out of the tank. And as the tank starts to slowly fall down back to 15 inches of mercury, the motor will turn on again. We're going to set up a small part of the circuit to show the output pin. The output pin is going to be controlling the motor um, pumping the air out of the tank. Uh, for the purposes of demonstration, I'm going to put an LED on that that output pin and we'll see how the output pin will react to the amount of pressure that this sensor is sensing. Because I don't have the motor here um, in my, uh, this is my home location and the motor and tank is actually at my business, I'll be using just the suction from my mouth and that will reach a maximum of around 15 inches of mercury. So what I'm going to do for this particular uh, demonstration I'll program uh, the microcontroller to turn the motor on or turn the LED on at 5 inches of mercury and then it'll turn it off at 15 or maybe 14 inches of mercury, uh, maybe 13 inches of mercury. Uh, that, is a, that is a level of suction I will be able to produce personally. So we can demonstrate it um, with the LED and the LED will eventually turn into a relay that will control the, the AC current of a motor or going to a motor. So now I'm going to install the LED. I'm going to use ground to one of these tie strips. And this is at the ground rail. And then from the ground, from the other end of the LED, I will add a resistor. So I provide no more voltage than the LED can handle. So it's going from this tie strip to the next tie strip. And then I'm going to take, I'm going to go with um, with pin number 14, which is port D pin 0. And that's number 14, pin number 14. I'm going to take that back to the resistor. So I have port D pin 0 going to one end of the resistor, the other end of the resistor is going to one lead of the, the LED, and then the LED, the negative side, is going to the negative rail. Now I'm going to add a few lines of code to control the pin, uh, having the, um, the sensor's output into the ADC. I'm sensing that and I'm putting it into a variable called inches of mercury, inches of HG, and uh, we'll test that number and turn on the LED when the motor should be turning on and turning off the LED when the motor should be turning off. So here is the program as we left it in part three. We have the initialization for the LCD. We have a uh, vacuum stated um, here for describing the, the number we're showing. It's in uh, Mercury. I'm going to go ahead and change this as inches. That's a little bit more descriptive. So that's actually at number 15. And then I have the initialization of the analog to digital con converter. Um, we're doing it in uh, interrupt mode, um, starting the conversion. And then the I have the interrupt service routine actually performing the after the conversion is performed, uh, showing the result. And that gets uh, converted into inches of mercury, the, the number that is output from the, from the ADC, and then that is brought to the LCD. <clears throat> and then the process is, starts all over again, uh, starting another conversion, and then it'll bring it back into this routine. The first thing we need to do to control the, um, the pin on port D is to actually set it as output. I'm going to put that right here. DDRD, and we're going to OR equals shifting a 1 to pin D0. There are many ways we could probably control the, the output of the pin, uh, making it either a, a logic high, a 1, or a 0. 
a low. I could work right inside of this routine, the interrupt service routine, but I'd rather stay out of this and, and work in my, in my never-ending loop. So that's going to force me to uh, take the inches of mercury and make it a global variable. To make this global variable work, we need to make it a static volatile, so the, uh, the com compiler will not, will not optimize it out. So to do this, we go to the top outside of all of our routines, since this is a global variable. And I'm going to use, um, I can use the integer just like I did before. And we're going to take the inches of mercury, and we'll put it up here. We're going to take this integer out because we, we don't want to declare it in this interrupt service routine anymore, since uh, we're declaring it out here now. And we're going to make it equal to zero for just to start. Now we also need to. Why did I do this? We also need to make it a static volatile variable, so it doesn't optimize out when we when we compile it. And we're going to use the this variable in the never-ending loop. We're going to say if yeah, I had that in my um, clipboard. So if it's greater than 13, this is when I want the the motor to stop. So what I would do is I would make the pin go low. But I'm not going to do it like that. I'm going to actually create another variable that says I, um, either I have enough vacuum or I don't have enough vacuum. So I'm going to make another variable, but it doesn't have to be a global because uh, we're going to be using that variable only in the never-ending loop. So we'll do it just outside of it, and we'll we'll use a um, an 8-bit integer for this one, and we'll call it enough vacuum. And this particular variable will be zero if there's not enough vacuum, and it'll be one when there is enough vacuum. One means uh, yes, um, it would have enough vacuum, and a zero would be no, is not. Uh, enough vacuum. I could define these uh, like a yes and a no up top if I wanted to, just like we did with the LCD. But I'm going to keep this simple and just use the zeros and ones. So I'm going to say if it is greater than 13, then there is enough vacuum. And that, that would be equal to 1. Yes, there is enough vacuum. Now, if the inches of, inches of mercury is less than 5, then we need to start the motor back up and have an output or logical high to the to the pin D0. So we're going to say the enough vacuum is equal to zero. That means it's not enough vacuum and it needs to start start the motor. So down here I'm going to have another if or condition where it says if there is enough vacuum, if there's not enough vacuum, which would be equal to zero, and double equals just means it's a test, a condition for true or false, or for a value. And it's a logical operator for um, equals. So if it's if it is not enough vacuum, I'm going to assign a high value to pin D0. And if there is enough vacuum, I can turn that off. I'm going to use the AND NOT operator here. Uh, the NOT, uh, use the NOT first, and then I'm going to contain the shifting. So this is turning the bit off by using an AND and a NOT mask to, to turn this particular pin D0 off. And then I'm using the logical OR to turn the pin D0 on. So this program should work as it is with the changes that I just made. So let's do a make and see if there's any errors. No errors. And I'm going to go ahead and program and see what happens. Before I show you the program, I just wanted to clarify one thing that I forgot to mention, and that is in the beginning when it is uh, first started, uh, we want the motor to be on so it does or would be able to reach um, the high vacuum. And we can see that if it's less than five, it will be zero and it also starts out as zero so as long as it is zero and it starts out as zero and and less than five is zero 
then um, it will try to turn on the the motor. So I think we're safe with be, um, start when we're starting up the program. It will uh, turn on the turn on the motor or turn on the LED in this case. Controller has been programmed. You can see the LED is on because. We've just started out, the enough vacuum is actually zero, and uh, you can see the inches of mercury is at zero. So when I start suction on the, on the sensor, um, I, if I get up to 13, the LED should turn off because there is enough suction in the tank um, to, to maintain a, a good vacuum. <clears throat> so let's try it. And then when, we, when, we, uh, when the LED turns off at 13, uh, we'll let the suction go down to five or four actually to see if it turns on again. So let's try it. It looked like it worked. We have success on making the LED turn on when we are below five and it turns off when we're above 13. I'm still not happy with the program because when we have a, when it's below five and we've stated that it's um, a, a not enough vacuum, this will be running many many times and, and it really doesn't need to because this when this bit gets set it gets set um, and it doesn't go back uh, to not being set so uh, we could actually make this only run or only execute one time uh, so it doesn't have to keep setting the bit even though it's already set and we can do that using the bit is clear if the bit is clear then we want to set it. Otherwise, there's no need to set it because the bit is already set. And we can do the same thing with the next one. If it's one, uh, that means that um, if it's not set, or if it is set, only if it is set, then we should execute this. <clears throat> so we can use the same command as before. And if the bit is set, then we can clear it. If it's already clear, then uh, there's no need to actually clear it again. So this is a little bit cleaner of a program because you aren't uh, burdening the the um, microcontroller and either setting the 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 pin or clearing the pin over and over again. It is only done once um, when, whenever it really needs to to do it. If it's uh, it is only doing it once if it is greater than 13 or if it's less than five. So let's test this and make sure it works. I'll go to make all and see if I have any errors, no errors, and we'll program. So the controller has been programmed. We have the LED is on. Let's see if the new code works. It looks like it works. So now we have seen how we can turn an LED on. Um, and off or uh, control a pin with what is happening with the inches of mercury. Thanks for watching. If you are following along with these experiments or producing successful projects on your own, helped by these tutorials, please let me know using the Contact Us page on the NewbieHack.com website. I would like to feature these on the website to benefit and motivate others to join this creative field. Thank you.